Praise the Lord, everyone. Thank you for tuning in with Dr. Leisha the Preacher. All right. So um, there's two things I want to do this evening. I want to do this reading. And before I notice that it's raining outside, ooh, it's thundering. What? Ooh, I love the idea of doing a reading while it's thundering and raining. Okay, so I want to make this video, but then I also want to start another video and continue reading my high school diary entries. I have a playlist called like my high school diary entries. I kept a journal in high school and this is it from high school. Very old, right? <laughs> I mean, this is like 30 something years old, you know, 30, whew, two, three years old, you know, this journal. So, um, but I have a playlist already with about maybe 14, 15 diary entries in it. So I'm going to continue because there's at least a hundred. There's at least a hundred in here and I want to read every one of them. Okay. Something fell out. Oh, okay. Why, why is this in there? Why is this in here? Oh, that's strange. I need to set this important document to the side. Yeah. And put it on top of the washing machine. Okay. So, yeah, I will be... Um, mm -hmm. You know, at some point this evening, reading from that diary. Okay, and then I just wanted to say that um, I hear some some noise like a, a bird or something. Hopefully it's not in my house. <laughs> but it's probably just outside the window. But anyway, because I sit right near the window here. But anyway, so the the throat chakra candle I've been using the same candle since I've been doing tarot yeah this is one of the first um, you know tarot uh, throat chakra candles that I've used you know while I've been doing tarot so it's, it's all burnt out. I can't do it anymore. So I'm replacing it with the second one ever used. So I'm just going to store my first one because I'll probably melt it. And, um, and while it's, you know, liquid, fill it with, you know, um, things that are important to me. Just fill it up with different stuff. You know what I mean? So anyway, so I just wanted to say my first candle is retiring. <laughs> And now I gotta light up a new one today. Yay. But St. Michael one is hanging in there. It got this much candle in there. So this is gonna be, you know, but I got another one on deck to replace this one. So, you know, no problem. So let me go ahead and light my candles. I'm a thrift store shopper. I love, I mean, it's like a hobby, a passion. Okay, so I'm lighting up this one for the first time. See, it's, it's never been lit. It's a little speck of something. Okay, I'm lighting it. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, speaking the truth from the spirit. Amen. 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 Right by the window. Let me light my sage. God is so good. He is so good. So, I'm a thrift store shopper. And so, today I had to make a trip out to Lake City. Lake City is about an hour away. So I had to make a trip out to Lake City today, right? And on the way back, there's this place called Sheriff's, Sheriff's like 
thrift store. Yeah, Sheriff's Thrift Store. And, um, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So I stop in there, and I find a, um, uh, like a, co a, a small coffee table. A small coffee table with uh, a, a little extra large legs, you know. So it's a little taller than, it may be more of an end table, but I'm using it as a, the coffee table, the, you know, because I need it to be taller so that my footstool could slide underneath it. I didn't have a table, but I had a little footstool thing, you know, and the footstool, you, it can open and you can store stuff in it. So I store my games in it, like chess and checkers and cards and stuff. I store that in there. And then I put the top on it. But now I found a, a table to go in front of my little sectional, sofa sectional piece where my footstool slides underneath the table because the legs are long enough. But the table is still small enough where my sectional doesn't feel, you know, I didn't want it to dominate, you know, that area. I just wanted something to be able to set a drink on, to be able to, um, <clears throat> you know, put the little tea remotes and my glasses and stuff on when I sit there and watch the TV, you know. <clears throat> mm. Okay. So everything is saged, everything's lit. Thank the Lord. All is well. But before it started raining, I had the mind that this was going to be a polyamorous reading. A polyamorous reading, praise God. So to kick off this polyamorous reading, I'm going to start with the pagan oracle deck. Let me just take all these rocks off. Take all the rocks off. Yeah, just take them off. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just take them all off. Because I know I'm going to be using them, right? So like I was saying, um, I, my heart was polyamorous reading, right? But now that it's thundering and raining, You know, it could still be that, I guess. I don't know. We'll see. It seems like my energy is shifting some. <clears throat> but from a polyamorous perspective, though, what I believe the Spirit is telling me to speak and say is... Even though we that practice polyamory, you know, I've practiced monogamy and I've practiced polyamory both. I lived monogamously as a married woman for 21 years. And then I've lived as a, a married polyamorous woman for 10 years. So I have 31 years of marriage experience 21 the first 21 years of me being married and I, I have two marriages one divorced and one is um divorced in every way but legal so that's why i still say i'm divorced you know just waiting for the courts to catch up so um but yeah so what the Spirit is giving me is, um, even though you may tell a person with your mouth that you are polyamorous or poly of some type, you know, that until you actually practice it with them, it's not really real to them. It may not feel real. And like for, for me, for example, the people that have been around me for the past like seven months or so even though they 
like my church members, you know, the few church members we have, we're very, very small church. And the few people that are there are clearly aware, oh, here's a card, clearly aware that I have practiced both monogamy and polyamory. And they are learning more about polyamory through um, me talking about it biblically. Like Lamech, um, Cain's son. Cain's son. So this is Adam's grandson. Adam and Eve's. Adam and Eve's grandson, Lamech. That was the first situation in the Bible where a man had two wives. He had two wives. And so, and the Bible talks clearly, speaks clearly of how he treated his wives fairly equal. You know what I mean? He would, you know, sit them both down and let them know, you know, what he's thinking, how he's feeling, you know, kind of thing. So, yeah. And, um, and you know, as we know, the Bible is filled with men having multiple wives. And then we met the Samaritan woman who Jesus made it very clear that she had had five husbands. Even though she didn't claim any of them at the moment, she was divorced or widowed of them or, you know, no longer held accountable, you know, will no longer be charged as a wife to these men. You know, she was no longer responsible, held accountable to these men as wives anymore. So she was divorced, some of them died, whatever happened to these five men. We don't, you know, the Bible don't really go into all that detail. But no matter what happened in these situations, she is considered a free woman right now. Even though she is dating someone, the person that she's with is not currently her husband, perhaps legally. See what I'm saying? So, but anyway, getting too deep. Um, so at church, you know, I've been, you know, just sharing the biblical stories from my perspective, you know having polyamorous experience you know what i'm saying so anyway i think this is a, a poly reading and um and the focus is you know even though you may speak about your polyamory experience until people see you practice it experiencing you practice it you know what i mean it's not really real until it happens and then you don't really know how they feel about it or think about it until they see you in practice. You know, so you may, you know, just because you're polyamorous doesn't mean that, it don't even mean you have any partners at all at any particular time. You can have zero partners in your life and still be polyamorous. Or you can have up to, you know, three or four partners in your life. You know, you can go from zero to one, two, three, four people. You know. But it don't make you any more or less polyamorous based on quantity. It's just the fact that you have that capacity to love. Some people have the capacity to love only one person at a time. Some people only have the capacity to love one person during their entire life. Very few people do that, have one partner their entire life. Very few people. But most of us are wired and trained to believe that one partner at a time is the accepted way. Other of us don't necessarily wait on one at a time. We love along the way. We collect people and we may have one, two, three, four. You know what I mean? You don't have to be, okay, you're next. Mm, we're together five, 10, 15 years. Okay, we break up. Boom. Okay, you're next. Boom. You know what I'm saying? Some of us are like serial monogamous. You know, we do the one person at a time. Other of us are like, I don't have to 
spread my lovers out like that. I can have them all at one time. And people can really jump in and out, you know, as they please over time because I don't feel like I own them anyway. I don't feel like they own me. You know what I'm saying? I don't have that strong sense of obligation toward people like that. You know what I'm saying? So, but when I'm done with a person, I'm done with a person. Period. But in polyamorous situation, I may see one partner just one time a year. One time a year, d depending on our situation. I may love them. They may love me. And, you know, we care about each other. We may text every day, even though we only see each other one time a year. You know what I'm trying to say? And then you may be married to somebody that you sleep in the bed with every night. You know? It's, a, you know, the, po the polyamorous life is very interesting. But we have the one in reverse. One in reverse. Off the rip, somebody is trying to make a decision on which direction to go. Something has clearly ended in your life, but you're not sure where your new beginning is and where it's headed and or where it's headed. You know what I'm saying? So you're at the point where you clearly accept and are experiencing that something is over and has ended. But you're just not quite sure where you're headed. So that's why the this card one came in reverse. But let me just read up on it. Make sure I'm not. I want to, you know, just make sure I'm in um, accurate. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Because um, in the upright, in the upright, it's called the writer and the nine of hearts. Okay, so so your heart is still in limbo. You know what I mean? You may have moved. You may have the divorce papers may be finalized. You may, you know, have a lot of closure in many, many areas. You know, you, you, you left the last job. You know, you put your two-week notice in and... <clears throat> this is Friday at 4 o'clock on your last day. <laughs> you know, your last day, Friday at 4 o'clock. <clears throat> it's like, I just left this job. Whoa, you know. <clears throat> My throat. Whew. But you accept all that. You accept. You moving. You accept. This is your last day on that job. You accept <clears throat> that... You know, maybe I'm divorced now. <clears throat> Legally, even in the courts and all that. You accept it. But your future just don't look that solid. You know what I'm saying? I mean, like, your heart is still like, uh, you know what I mean? I mean, your heart is not stuck in the past. It's just that. Your heart is not sold on what's to come. But it says good news, exciting, and really that more masculine um, side of you. The more masculine side of you. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, just, you know, all that, as, as exciting as a new opportunity is, exciting as a new town new home, new friends, new job, as exciting as all this newness sounds and looks and you still feel lost. You know what I'm saying? You still feel torn, uncertain. I mean, excited, but uncertain. Whew. Wow. All this new at once and letting go all of the who I am letting go of all of who I am at one time accepting all that who I am 
<laughs> in, a, in a new perspective all at one time. You know what I'm saying? Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. You know, letting go of the old as you're accepting the new, you know. Um, ooh, this came in the upright. You're going to have to um, keep your eyes open. You can't, you can't be blind. New means new good and new evil. Ooh, mm. New means new good and new evil. So from a polyamorous perspective, you know, if you guys are, if you're single or in a polyamorous relationship already, um, meaning you got at least, you know, yourself and one partner, you know, and you guys are, you yourself alone, trying to meet number two, because you're number one, okay? So you're trying to meet your number two, um, you know, or you and number two are open to number three, you see what I'm saying? So remember, anyone new is coming with good and bad, good and bad. And, you know, just pay attention, keep your eyes open, you know, because you don't want to be exploited or, you know, you don't want, if you've been doing good all by yourself, you don't need someone to come along and throw you off your good path. You know, you want to avoid that if you can, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, and then if you and number two, because you're number one, and if number two you know, partner number two is, uh, y'all been, you know, together for a year and y'all tight, but y'all, you know, having that itch, you know, you got that itch for something new, <laughs> someone new, some, not something, but someone of a whole human being, a person, you all have this itch, this desire for someone new, either, either one of you individually or the both of you, you know, collectively. You're itching for something new to happen. But just know that any new person is going to come with their good and their bad. And don't overlook the bad stuff. Don't overlook it. No matter how small it may seem, take it all into consideration. You got to think about it all. How it's going to affect me. How it's going to affect us. The us that's been together for a whole year already. So let me look at card number 23, make sure I'm not missing any points on these cards. Um, yeah, because, you know, again, when something is new, you know, it's exciting, but yet, you know, it can be, it can bring some stress and anxiety, you know. Understandable, completely understandable. You know, it can make you worry, you know, overthink things, you know, you know. But be that way because you don't want to be cut off guard, you know. You don't want little things to become big unnecessarily. Okay, and we got two, four, six, seven. So we got the seven of them. Um, of clubs which it means you know even spiritually you've experienced closure a lot of closure in spiritual cycles and again you're opening yourself up even to new spiritual things too and you know a, a new battleground for war <laughs> new battleground for war you know you know, as you elevate, as you ascend, you're going to drop off the old, you know, good and bad in your life. But you're going to open up a whole new cycle of new good and new bad, <laughs> new evil in your life. I know that sounds real basic, but, or even kind of crazy, but, you know, but you can count on it. <laughs> you can count on it. You can count on 
your commitment with God. That's why I'm saying your first relationship is with you and God. You are the first partner in your relationship within God's creation. God made you and anybody that you're involved with. So you are the first person in your relationship with God. And then you decide between you and God, y'all have a vow. You're married to, you're married. We're married to our creator and maker first. <laughs> you know, we are the bride of Christ. Purchased by his blood. You know what I'm saying? So we are already married spiritually. And then, you know, God the Father allows us here on earth to marry among ourselves so that we can have generational wealth so that the kingdom wealth can penetrate through the fruits of the spirit can penetrate and spread all through the earth his fruits the fruits of his spirit you know we're married to God so we're the first partner in our relationship with God and then God allows us to get involved with other people to help us on our journey here on earth to achieve certain things card number 25 wow <clears throat> call you know the ring promise contract you know we're, 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 we have a we have a vow we made a vow to God the creator and maker. We, we, you know, we have an agreement with him. We're under contract with him while we're here on earth. And it's our responsibility and our job to make sure that we're, we're doing it. And we got to measure our own self, examine our own self to make sure that we are on point. We're married to God. These people on this earth that we're married to, you know, we are to love them as, as, as well as we love ourselves. And that's it. As good as you are to yourself, be that good to your partners. Otherwise, you are married to God. First. So you're number one. And then you may meet an individual and y'all might become two. You know, one, two, you know, two together. You guys unite. And then y'all might need somebody else. Three. A three chord bond. Even greater connection. A vow to God. That this union, whether it be one, two, three, four, you know, two or three are gathered together. What in his name? Ooh, that's gonna, I'm going to make a card on that. I'm going to make a card on that. Okay, but yeah, promise, contract, engagement, commitment, commitment in heaven and on earth. In heaven with God, we each have a commitment, no matter if it's just you, you and somebody. Well, no, this is that's a tree. This is the person in yellow. <laughs> Whether it's just you, another person. A third person, a fourth person. It don't matter how all this play out. Each of you have your own purpose and commitment with God. And when we come together down here, it's to help each other reach our goals in the kingdom. Down here on earth. Yeah. Our earthly contract with God. Yeah. So... I know I make it sound so simple, right? <laughs> yeah, so that's it. You know, <sighs> you know, we're some of us are headed off into these new relationships and new situationships and you know, all this stuff. 
And uh, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do it like this. Yeah, I like it like that. Okay, boom. And, um, but we got to keep our eyes open. We got to stay wise. We got to remember our contract with God first. And then we got to remember any contracts, agreements, and understandings that we have with ourselves, you know, God, and with second, third, fourth partners. And then don't forget that, you know, you may have your offspring, your bloodline. What obligations do you have to your own bloodline? You know, you got to create all this balance in your life. And you got to consider your bloodline with each of your earthly partners. You may have one child with this woman or one child with this man. And then you may have remarried at some point and had children with wife number two, husband number two. And then some of us are up to three spouses and stuff and four and five. You know, King Solomon had like... 900 women or something. You know what I'm trying to say? So, you know, let me go off into um, tarot. Okay, let's get some tarot on this. But what Spirit is saying, and the car came out that fast, but what Spirit is saying is, Even though you've closed out all these cycles, all these, you know, things in your life, you got a lot of closure, everything is clean, good, you're in ready position to move forward with your new way of thinking, your new attitude, your new job, your new home, uh, you know, your new, just, just new, you know, and then some of you, you don't have all that kind of new going on, but, you know, you're free now. You know, on many levels, you're free in your mind, in your heart, and whatnot. You're able to reclaim it for yourself. You know, you ain't got to think about that other person no more. Not like you used to, you know. The relationship ended. You know, the relationship changed. The way you think changed. And so, um, what came out is the king of pentacles. Yeah, so divine masculines, a lot of men um, coming out of divorce, you know, do feel when they usually are on their game, they usually on their game have been the king of their domain, money looking good, smelling good, you know, riding good, everything looking good. But then you go through divorce or some kind of separation or, you know, you changing jobs, changing careers, you know, ch you know, changing your residency, um, you know, you experience some type of loss. You know, even like maybe your parents and siblings are passing, you know, dying, things like that with COVID being around. You know, a lot of people are experiencing a lot of death in their families and just so much change. Change. A lot of change. A lot of loss. And so, you know, you're a sitting duck. For new, <laughs> I mean, really, you know, when you experience that much change and loss, you know that sets you up for something new. Something new. You you have no choice but to be exposed now to new good and new evil stuff. All the old good and evil stuff passed away. Now, you, you know, it's a different playing field. It's a different battlefield, <laughs> you know, a different war, you know, and you got to identify up front, you know, the quicker you can figure out who's the good in your life and who's the evil in your life, then you can, you know, balance out 
you know but remember all this starts with you and god first your reason for being here your purpose individually outweighs the relationship that you have with anybody on this earth so that's why it just makes sense to be yoked up with partners including yourself partners that are supportive of your journey your journey your purpose because you don't want to be walking around uncertain you want your masculine energy whether you male or female you want your masculine energy to feel like a king supposed to, supposed to feel and see that's why what i like about jezebel when king ahab her husband act like he was just so sick because he couldn't get a vineyard she was like what is wrong with you get up you are not acting like no king she made it known what do you want okay fine I, i'm gonna get it for you i got it you know see even the king of wands i mean a lot of men when they going through divorce and going through um financial hardship you know having to change and switch gears and jobs and leave town you know their hometown they ain't really live nowhere else now they gotta go move to a whole different state and all that kind of stuff Whew. you know your sex life you know your desire to explore something new is challenged you know you you, you have a little fear Fear can make fear, fear during struggling times can throw your love life off. It can. It can throw your love life off too. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, both King of Wands and King of Pentacles in the reverse, Divine Masculines. Divine Masculines are really going through really going through and um you know their hearts see the nine of hearts you know their hearts are feeling alone you know if not alone maybe a little lonely you know because sometimes you can have other people around you but if you don't have the person that you really love around you you can feel lonely even though you're not alone because other people are around you know so but for the most part you know uh even your spirituality you know you're you know reevaluating and questioning your contract with god well lord where does this put me now you know where am i when it comes to kingdom you know what i'm saying <laughs> you know how am i performing how do I move forward with it being just me now or something like that? You know. You know, how am I going to ever get to this new point? How am I going to get to this new point? How long is it going to take? How long am I going to be out of commission? You know. And it's like you, you, you're in a position for all this new stuff. You're in a position to meet new people. You're in a position to start the new job. You're in position to lead town. You're in position for this empty nest. But matters of the heart and, you know... And just, you know, just waiting on divine timing, waiting for divine timing, you know, because God has his timing, you know. It's not just us in these situations. We got to consider God. Um, let me see. Oh, the Ace of Swords came out. So, yeah, I mean... Trust God. Trust God that your discernment is on point. Think about how you've endured and you can't. You got through it. You know what I mean? Think about what all you've endured. 
you know, and how you brought closure to all that. You brought closure and clarity and understanding. You have more knowledge. So now you'll be able to discern when you move forward, you can trust your instincts. You are renegotiating your terms and contract with God. Yeah, we do that. We get to examine our lives and say, okay, Lord, I've gotten to this point. Now this is how things are looking based on what you've blessed me with. Based, Lord, based on what you've brought me through, based on this, that, and the other, this is what it's looking like down here on earth for me. These, this is what it looks like my options are. So, Lord, where are we going from here? You know, kind of thing. But your discernment is on point, on point, on point. You're victorious. Trust, trust that you will be able to know what's good and what's evil in your life. They're both are going to be there. But we have. A relationship with God to navigate us through, you know, to give us the discernment to know what's good and evil. There's nothing we can do to get rid of good and evil, but we have the tools that it takes to navigate through it. And with that being said, I'm going to go into, um, um, ooh. before I bring out, I think I'm going to use um, Mystic Beauties um, to clarify. Because she has, speaks a different language, you know. I speak, um, I speak more, you know, kind of gentle. <laughs> You know, have a gentle speech about this where she come out, okay, like she her magician magician card came out. You know, magician, magician. And it says power, skill, action, manifestation, something significant. Yeah, like I was saying, you know, you have the discernment. You have the magic, the discernment the power within to go forward into new situations with confidence. All you got to do is just reflect on how you overcame everything that you just came out of and the cycles are all closed. You were successful. So that's how you know you can move forward with confidence, knowing that, look, I didn't came a long way. And ain't nothing going to stop me now. I might be a little older. I might be a little slower. I might be a little this, a little that. But I still have on the inside everything that I need. And that don't age. <laughs> and it can be shared with others. You know what I'm saying? And then we have the two of pentacles. Two of pentacles. Okay. Where, you know, you're no longer really, you're no longer juggling. You know, you're not. You're no longer juggling. Okay. Where for a minute there, you were, you know. But you've closed a lot of cycles out. And you're in the position and ready to, to experience all this new stuff. So the juggle is over. You In your time, management is going to transition from juggling all the old stuff that you've closed those cycles. And you're in ready position for new stuff to come in. You know, you, your time is going to open up for these new things. And again, these new things are going to consist of good and evil stuff. But you have discernment, you know, and you will be able to juggle. You're going to be able to juggle. You know, you juggled coming out of the old life. Okay, you juggled and managed all that. You know, 
now you're not juggling as much because all that old stuff is kind of behind you and your position for this new perspective, this new attitude, this new way of seeing life and living and making decisions. And you're opening yourself up from past experience, successful experiences to take to you. And even the evil things you went through, you remember. You, you, you pull the experience from out of that too. And you use it going forward. You know, if you don't pay your mortgage three or four times in a row, you're going to get put out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You're going to end, you're going to get foreclosed. And that's something you can remember going forward. If you buy a house in the future, I got to make the payments or I'm going to be put out. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, you're going to be able to handle, you know, the two of pentacles and the magician card. You're going to be able to weigh everything out. You're going to be able to make good discernment. You know, again, you know, Mystic Beauty is uh, right on point. With, um, I've been saying all along, and I'm going to take her card, this other card. The Knight of Cups. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Romance. Oh, yeah. You know, again, you know, I see where the King of Wands, you know, you have been worried. You know, that masculine energy, whether you male or female, you know, that part of you that need to feel secure, that you got your shit together, that, you know, you got everything in control, you know, your money, your home, your, you know, your life set up, you know, every, you know, you want to feel like you ready for new love who wants new love and don't have the resources it's hard to enjoy so um but yeah um you know just rely on the fact that you still have that contract with god and that he doesn't want us to be alone. He wants us to have love. He does. He wants us to have love. And, um, and so that's why we are to keep him in the midst of our relationships. Keep him. Because he said that man should not be alone. It was his plan. His idea. You know. It's not an original thought to us. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> the idea came from God. So, and we're married to him first. You know? And, um, so, you know, whether you have one person outside of yourself, two people, three people outside of yourself, you know, as long as God is in the midst, you know, You'll have all the love you need. You know what I mean? You'll have all the love you need. As long as God is in the midst. Now the moment, you know, you guys don't maintain a relationship with God, a healthy one, then you will feel it. The disagreement and conflict gets thicker and thicker and thicker and thicker and thicker and, thicker and, thicker and you cannot escape it yeah all right so we're like 48 minutes into here so let me um uh i was gonna add my dr leisha the preacher uh, stuff but i'm not i'm going to close this out with an angel message there we go an angel message yeah mm -hmm. an angel message I want my polyamorous families out there to feel confident in what they're doing. And because you know, I know we get a lot of criticism and lack of support. Let me put these mystic cards over here because they slide. They slippery. Because they're spanking brand new. <laughs> I love having those. Yeah. 
And the thing, too, about um, the Knight of Cups is, you know, what I'm picking up is, you know, pull within your youthful energy. Now, we may be older on the outside, but on the inside, we're our love, I mean, it don't age. You know, you can feel the way you felt when you was 14, 15, 16, 17 on the inside. I'm telling you. Dig inside and pull up um, that old, not old, youthful, you know what I mean? The youthful love that you used to, you know, feel and experience. Yeah, on the inside, how you felt. Okay, it says responsibility. Okay, it says take responsibility for your own happiness. Yes, taking responsibility. Like I said, when you put God in, in the center of your relationship with yourself, person number two, three, four, five outside of you, you know what I'm saying? You know, that's powerful. And all these people have to be on your team, just like you agree to be on their team to help them on their journey, their purpose in life. You know what I'm saying? We got to take those kind of, we got to take those commitments responsibly. You know, I mean, what other point is for a lover to be in my life if they're not going to help me on my journey with God? The best is yet to be. The best is yet to be. Good things have happened, but even better things will be presented in the future. Because you're moving forward. You're moving forward. It's inevitable. And it says release. Release. Let go and focus on what is positive and uplifting. That's it for my poly people this is a poly reading love you guys so much as you open yourself up to more love it's just more love because we have our love with god you know that's how we learn to love ourselves is through god you know and then we share it with other people you know and we all we can do is pray that these other people have some type of relationship with God too you know that's all you can pray for um, that's me anyway you know but do my partners have to believe in God hmm. uh, it just depends on the person it depends on the person you know because to me whether a person believe in God or not with the words that come out of their mouth um, doesn't weigh as much as the life they live. You can withhold your confession of God and Jesus. You can not verbalize it but still live it every day. Just by how you treat other people can reveal what kind of relationship you have with God. Even if you never confess with your mouth. That's deep. The life you live. So a person may not ever tell me that they believe in God or not. They may never tell me. That they believe in Jesus or not. But the Holy Spirit in me though. Will know. If they're being. If they're treating me godly. The Holy Spirit in me. Will know. If they have the fruits of the Spirit. Even if they never tell me. One way or the other. I go by the fruit that is that they bear. I don't go by what come out of people's mouths. 
know them by the fruit. So that's my advice to polyamorous uh, lovers out there. Know your partners by the fruit that they bear. That's deep. Love it. All right, guys. Okay, so if you want a personal reading about your polyamorous dynamic, you can email me at drleishatherpreetja at gmail.com. If you want to leave me um, a love offering, my cash app is dollar sign Dr. Leisha the Preacher. Love you guys. Click like, subscribe, and please share my video. I think the last I saw, I'm up to 190 members. Thank you guys.